sports games have been around since the dawn of video games and have been a staple of every gaming generation. Today, sports games are more realistic and graphically impressive than ever before. The blades of the grass, reflections off helmets, and motion accuracy are all spectacular, but graphics and realism don't always equate to a better sports game. Fun is the number one factor in any video game, and that's why I've teamed up with another YouTuber that's just as passionate about sports video games, the immortal John Hancock. Together, we've come up with a list of 10 weird sports games that are very much worth your time. These games are developed outside the lines and emphasize fun, but still count as a sports title. So don't expect to see any Maddens, FIFAs, NBA 2Ks, or MLB The Shows on this list. These games are not created every year, but instead highlight a sport with a unique twist. These are 10 weird sports video games that are must plays. The Immortal John Hancock here, and I'm happy to talk about some obscure and oddball sports games. And first up is Ninja Baseball Batman. And this is an arcade release, sold terribly here in North America. And what you have is you have a brawler with a sports theme, you know, and they're taking characters, famous characters of the 90s and putting them as an homage in a, a, a just a, a crazy over the top zany brawler. There's baseballs, there's mitts, there's weird enemies, there's awesome boss fights, four player simultaneously to play. I had the honor of playing this uh, in Portland at Quarter World, and you know, it's a very, 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 very rare arcade cabinet, and uh, it is popular on MAME, and you can play it on MAME, which is how I play it now these days, and it's simply fantastic. Highly recommend playing this as I haven't played any brawlers like this, and with that sports theme, it makes my list. Man, I love the 2000s. It was the only time you could combine a cast of criminals, petty thieves, prostitutes, and murderers with the most over-the-top humor and adult jokes to create a pretty fun game. Outlaw Tennis was released in 2005 for the PS2 and Xbox and was one of eight games in the Outlaw Sports series. Tennis is for country club members and snooty housewives, but not this game. Outlaw Tennis combines offensive humor and characters with surprisingly good gameplay and top-notch arcade tennis to create a unique experience. There are plenty of elements to keep the gameplay fresh with time bomb tennis balls, moving walls on the net, as well as different modes that incorporate football, baseball, casino, hot potato, and pinball mechanics. And I haven't even brought up the ability to beat up your opponent to gain the advantage during the match. The Outlaw Sports series may come off as a cheap shtick, but the bottom line is, is that it's fun and it's full of laughs. And if you enjoy arcade tennis, this weird sports game is definitely worth your time. Ah, <sighs> the 2000s. What a time to be alive. Developers were not afraid to try things back then. And the Outlaw series isn't just good for a laugh, but it's good for some fun on the weekend with your friends on the couch. Here is another game that you may have not heard of or played and due to it being on older classic computers as well as the Atari Jaguar. There were some other versions of this game uh, that were gonna be offered on 16-bit platforms but got canceled. And so Brutal Sports Football is a pretty solid, you know, very violent Neanderthal kind of themed, uh, you know, football game. And there's weapons on the field. There, you can do kind of a semi-league. There's different modes. There's difficulty settings. I would recommend playing it on beginner for sure. 
and I enjoyed playing this one. And you know, it's got some multiplayer options there. Um, the frame rate is a little choppy, uh, but the graphics are nice and detailed. And you know, going back and playing this, I enjoyed it more now than I remember playing it back in the day. And so if you're a fan of kind of non-traditional sports games, or you're looking for something a little different, Brutal Sports Football, highly recommend it. What do you get when you combine the chaotic power-ups and weapons of Mario Kart and combine it with the NASCAR license? Well, you get a pretty sweet arcade racer that features some of the most iconic NASCAR drivers. Released in 2000 for the PlayStation, NASCAR Rumble is one of the most unique racing titles for NASCAR. You'll be able to race as Richard Petty, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt, and Kill Yarborough, just to name a few. While you're racing with and against official NASCAR drivers, you won't be driving on the traditional racetracks. Instead, players can choose between eight courses, each designed for maximum fun and chaos with shortcuts and hazards around every bend. I mentioned power-ups earlier, and NASCAR Rumble has 11 to boost your car or wreck your opponents. You have the basic ones like Nitro, Oil Slicks, and Invincibility, but there's also tornadoes, storms, and my personal favorite, the Big Rumble. That's a big red bumper that's put on the front of your vehicle that bounces away any cars if you hit them. Racing with NASCAR legends and drivers is a blast, but you'll also be able to unlock vehicles like tow trucks, bulldozers, and broken down RVs. If you're in the mood for some NASCAR racing, but you want an arcade twist to it, NASCAR Rumble is an excellent unique sports title, and it was received really well. I spent many weekends burning rubber and looking behind me for those tornadoes. I think you made him mad! Ah, another game that gets overlooked quite a bit, and that's Mutant League Hockey. Now, a lot of people know about Mutant League Football. It's one of the better kind of unofficial non-sport sport games on the Sega Genesis. You know, it's, it's brutal, it's got a monster theme, and it's well done. Well, Mutant League Hockey came out later, and it's not as good as Mutant League Football, but if you're a fan of EA hockey games, you, there's a lot going on in here that's awesome. You have all the, the gore and violence and the monster and over zany tops, uh, you know, dialogue. But you know what? Underneath all that, it's just a fun hockey game, especially for that non-sport fan. So maybe you're, you're someone that's not into just, you know, normal traditional hockey. You may enjoy this and I do recommend it. Play it in emulation, it is fairly expensive. The physical version is, is fairly difficult to find, but you know what? You can play this on emulator and just enjoy it, have fun, and enjoy a non-traditional sports game. Golf is boring, right? Only old, retired rich men play it. Well, think again, at least with Pena Fantasy Golf, released on the PSP in 2009. On Pena Island, the game of golf is a sacred ritual used to defeat evil every 100 years when a dark lord tries to take over the world. Pena is a casual arcade golf game. This means it's very easy to pick up and play for anyone. It doesn't matter your skill level, you'll likely play and have fun because the game makes it easy. You'll be given the most beneficial club in each situation, but you can switch it out as you see fit. Characters are also very customizable, including their clubs and balls, which change the stats. Some balls go further, while others control better. The courses you play are all fantasy with settings like snow, lava, and paradise themes. Pena may be simple, but it does offer a huge replayability factor. 
There is a single player campaign and it can be pretty challenging. It took me two months of casual playtime to beat the entire game, and once you reach the halfway point, the challenge really begins to ramp up. Pena's gameplay is excellent, but the plot isn't anything to scoff at. It will keep you entertained as each match brings you closer and closer to the conclusion of the game, as you try and prevent the evil lord from returning. And yes, the girls are easy on the eyes. I was very surprised at how much fun I had with Pena Fancy Golf. It was a game that I decided to pop in during a car ride and I found myself playing it two months later just to complete it. Arcade golf, trick shots, and one strange plot blend together really well. If you're tired of your standard run-of-the-mill baseball game, look no further than Base Wars. And Base Wars takes that traditional baseball game and puts robots in it. You can fight to take over bases. And I really think it's an excellent overlooked game. You know, there's other amazing oddball sports games such as Super Baseball 2020, but this definitely kind of gets overlooked. Uh, you can edit a team, you can play in a series of games, and I think there's a lot to enjoy here. Is it perfect? No. There's other amazing NES sports games, but if you're looking for something different, this is really catered to really someone that maybe just doesn't, doesn't want to play just the standard baseball game. And there is a lot to enjoy in here. I think the graphics are amazing. Uh, fielding can be a little bit difficult, and pitching can get ultra fast you, know, you can throw fastball super fast it takes a little bit to get to use to the timing i enjoyed playing this one and going back and revisiting it so yes check out base wars my love for nba street actually starts with NBA Live 2000. In NBA Live 2000, there was a mode where you could play Michael Jordan one-on-one -on, -one on a street court. I played hours and hours of that mode. So when NBA Street came out in 2001 for the PlayStation 2 and GameCube, it was an easy sell for me. But I was in for a pleasant surprise when I finally got my hands on it as a kid. NBA Street is a combination of the arcade action of NBA Jam and the attitude of street basketball in the big city. And for me, it's a slam dunk. Playing against friends is a blast, but the single player mode of City Circuit is phenomenal. Create your player and team up with NBA players and street ballers and work your way through various famous street courts. The cool thing is that instead of a time limit, basketball games are played to the score of 21 making games an adrenaline rush from start to finish. Points can be easy to come by, but it's the flashy combinations that earn you bonus points that make the gameplay so addicting and keeps you coming back match after match. There was this one move that I was obsessed with as a kid. Essentially, you'd roll on the ground and you'd keep dribbling the basketball. I used it a ton in NBA Street and eventually, I started trying to practice the move in my driveway. I was a bit of a dweeb, but NBA Street made me feel like I could play above the rim. Another game I recently went back to revisit was Michael Jordan's Chaos in the Windy City. And you know what? This is actually an above average platformer with the sports theme, with Michael Jordan, with zany power-ups. You have different basketballs and they have different effects. You can even slam dunk in this game, but it's a platformer, it's not a sports game. And you're going around in Chicago and you're saving various Chicago Bulls players. And there's keys on each stage where you have to retrieve them and unlock uh, elements in each stage, but I actually enjoyed this one. I think it kind of gets uh, poo-pooed because, you know, it's a sports, uh, is it a sports game, is it a platformer? It's both, and you know, it has that kind of platformer 
kind of theme of the 90s. There were so many different platformers coming out, I think it got overlooked. But you know, if you're a fan of Jordan, or if you're wanting to play in a platformer a little bit different with the sports team, definitely Michael Jordan is gonna fit that bill. And I think it's actually a pretty good platformer indeed. And one I wanna go back and revisit if I have more time. If there's one game that sums up the mid-2000s perfectly, it's probably Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball, released exclusively for the Xbox in 2003. The era was filled with over-the-top violence, crude humor, and yes, boobs. Taking the popular fighting series Dead or Alive and putting the sexy cast of girls on a beach in a volleyball tournament may seem like an odd pairing. But boy, does it work. The majority of the game takes place in a two week period playing volleyball against the girls of DOA. Controls are very simple with set and return buttons. This works well and the girls control with ease. Depending on how sensitive you push the button also changes the power of the spike or serve. For as many elements that are wrapped into this game, the volleyball portion is not only playable and fun, but it's very technically sound. You'll have to recruit a partner to play with and you'll start courting the girls with gifts like swimsuits, accessories, and treats. Each girl has different tastes so it can be a bit of a trial and error. Aside from playing volleyball, you can go to the casino and gamble with slot machines, blackjack, roulette, and craps. And the money that you earn or win, you can use to buy more swimsuits and apparel. Okay, you can laugh all you want, but Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball is a technically sound and legit volleyball sports game. And it comes with a killer soundtrack that will help whisk you away for a two week vacation on Zack Island. So those were 10 weird sports video games that are still must plays. Which of them have you heard of before? Or which of them did you learn about and now you want to play them? But hey, this isn't just for you, it's for me. If you have any recommendations of weird sports titles, let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to watch more gaming countdowns. And of course, John Hancock had a huge role in this video, and if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to him as well. Thanks for watching.